Hello. Today, I want to hit on being an earth guardian. And part of this overarching indigo and or star seed soul family tribe that is here for very specific missions. Though I would say at the very top of that, there's a much larger mission that really all in unique ways to bring missions through really connect into, regardless of what lineage that you descend from. And so this Earth Guardian concept to me really is truly, I think, the meaning, the real meaning of the word warrior. So when you when you resonate with the indigo and or star seed aspect of of who you truly are and you hear that and you and you you and it resonates in your being the very interesting thing that happens is you you really hear this call from this primordial place that begins within us it's this very close yet distant voice that speaks to us and says are you ready and i'll never forget you know the the way that i really came into this knowing is i mean there's so many aspects and ways in which we start to really slowly realize that there's something so much more that i'm here for because the honest truth is that not everyone feels that way because there are, there are souls that come into this incarnation that aren't here as part of a sisterhood and brotherhood that comes to serve in distant dimensions, other dimensions and, and you know, parallel universes, however we would like to say that, um, that go to serve in times of great need. And so... Again, not everyone is going to hear or feel that call. So when we're speaking, you know, and I'm speaking directly to those that feel the call, you hear this and you feel this. At least I did, as I'm sure many of you have. We hear it and we feel it when we're really young. And I started to having, I, I have started having such profound, beautiful dreams, and I was a young girl and they came to me in very different ways but it was always the same beautiful figure and i knew at that time that you know this this being this woman this this goddess is so absolutely connected to me and i and she used to come to me as a fairy as fairies as i was i was very connected into the fae and the fairies when I was little. And, you know, I would always, in fact, I remember writing a, a poem in sixth grade because I loved writing. I loved writing, I loved reading. I loved consuming wisdom. Like that's a, it's a sure sign your child is an indigo. And you, you know, what I, what I felt is really this energy of this in this um this indigo i always i used to call it blueberry <laughs> and um this br vibrant pink energy surrounding me um that i that really turned into a vibrant orange but this beauty and now it's a, in a vibrant emerald and there's so many reasons as to why this is layered this way but i um I very specifically remember, you know, this fairy energy and this poem that I wrote in sixth grade that was about my blueberry corner. And I wrote about basically taking my desk and, and being isolated and alone on this blueberry island. And I don't even know if I have that anymore, but I really remember that so vividly. And because I always felt like I was kind of in my own island. And, you know, that's a really interesting feeling. And I'm sure many of you felt that way too. And so 
you know, when I had these visions and these dreams, it's like, I didn't really know who to talk to about that. And, you know, especially you don't, you don't bring that into your middle school conversations. <laughs> I mean, you know, that's the beauty of I, what I hope is changing today in some places and some sections and segments of this world. I hope, and I feel that, that, that is lifting and that, children can speak about these kinds of things way more openly in the safe sector segments of this realm that isn't going to be a public school. And, and I remember this dream that I kept having in, in high school. And it was just, it was so profound. And the interesting thing is I'm just now in my mid forties, piecing together exactly what that meant because, and there's a reason why, I always knew that I was connected into the aspect of what has been called Ariel, an archangel. And, and I'll get into that into another video because I have what I believe an archangel truly is, is, is a is a higher dimensional being that is sending in frequencies. It's like an eight, like an angle of frequencies and is a very real um, being. And, and I think that it can show up differently. The energy can show up differently for us and the frequencies that we receive are going to be unique as well. And that's the beauty of, you know, the, the oversoul or the, you know, the higher selves or your multidimensional team and lineage in which you choose and you are a part of and that you is incarnated. Because really, I think the higher selves aspect is really a misnomer because it's just, it's us, except we need to really understand or understand. I like that word much better. We need to understand that the the realization that um, these like it is like we are the multidimensional being. We are not really the being that sits in front of you. This is an aspect or an angle of the frequency that is that is like the how we bring through the multidimensional way of experiencing and how we you know, choose our mission and mastery and express that is through this physical form. And so, you know, it's very interesting to really see this image of this beautiful goddess that I have been with my entire life. And now I know her and I know the lineage and I know exactly who we are and what we're here to do. And so I want to share with you this dream that I had in my teens, because I think that the guts of this is how do you figure out, how do we, how do we figure out the beauty of who we truly are at the multidimensional level? Well, we do that by tapping in to the magic that we hold within us. And we really truly understand that words and so many things of this realm have been hijacked, manipulated, and is under ne negative or evil factions. By the way, evil at the root etymology, the word means cruel. We live in a very cruel world that has been without its cosmic mother. It's like we've been growing up in a broken, very abusive, trauma-ridden home. And now it is time to rebalance these energies. This is, this is the true update of what an earth guardian really truly means and activating in this way because we are being asked to do that. And so this dream was so powerful to me because now I know this is the lineage and this is a mother of dragons lineage. And this lineage is part of the great white lion Elohim lineage. 
And this is, you know, of, and we're talking about the, the God creation realms. And the very interesting thing is, this, is that in my dreams, and by the way, this dream I had every night for many years. I mean, it was, it, this dream was screaming at me. And because we live in the internal, the eternal now, as a flowing, constant, in, infinite river of wisdom and an infinite intelligence deriving from God's source or prime creator or primeval creator, because there is no beginning or end in that energy or consciousness, right? Um, what we're really, that dream was for me right now. And that is a fantastic way to look at how we are activated and trained. The, the one thing that happened to you, and for me, this is 30 years ago, that was so ingrained in my memory and always has been. And I always knew that there was, I, I wanted, I knew that there was a, a vivid, amazing, magical reason, but, you know, putting words to it, I was still kind of fumbling with, wow, you know, this, you know, as an emissary, as an oracle, I just really, you know, I knew that this was connected in a really big way. You don't have a dream every night for many years when you're super young for it not to have meaning. But it was beautiful. And it was, I wish I could, I can't, I, I have not activated the drawing capability yet. Otherwise, I would love to share that. But essentially, this goddess who is the, an aspect of the Queen Guinevere and, or Brigid goddess, or what you could even connect into as the Ariel energy. And she looked, she always comes to me in the same, in the same form. She's always dressed in this, in this beautiful Celtic, Druidic clothing. And it's white. And she has red and golden, like blonde hair that meshes together and, hang, and is braided to the side. And her, obviously, she is extremely, you know, tall and a noble feeling. And in this dream that I had every night, it was brief, but she would stand on this majestic stairway with white lions everywhere. And I was, it, it was like she was, it wasn't like I was there. It was that she was there and she was peering into me. I might get teary. <laughs> because it was beautiful. I wish I could like just trend, you know, just flip that onto the screen. And the stairway went into this beautiful, beautiful um, kingdom, which I would in a, in a, in the, you know, the, the God creator realm world. And it was in, it had white kind of clouds, you know, kind of around it. And it was gold and white. And I will tell another story in another time because I've actually merged with my sixth density multidimensional aspect of myself. And that same coloration and building was actually in that merge, which was fascinating. And so, it, and, and it was just, it's absolutely gorgeous kingdom and city, world, realm. And she would come down these majestic stairs and there was all these other beings, you know, noble beings walking up and they, you know, kind of around. And she would come and she would just pet the white lions and she would look at me, peer into my being, my soul. And she would say, I love you. Sorry. And so that energy 
has stayed with me my whole life. And when you can remember powerful things like this, you can step back into that energy at any moment. And so when, and so that was the dream. It was just over and over and over. And so it was always reaffirming that my choice to, to do the things that I had done to be able to, you know, get out of the place that I was, you know, I would always come back into the energy and just feel that divinity, feel that love. And see, now I've been able to connect this into my lineage and I get it and I see it and I feel it. And part of this is activating as an earth guardian. Now, the earth guardian is a protector. And there are varying lineages in which can come through. And these lineages are very, you know, important and powerful for us to feel into and to know. Because when we truly can see, you know, the extreme, the entire patterning of how we're showing up or how we're being guided and, and activated to show up in this specific way, well, then we can actually create from that place of power. And so if you resonate and you are also an earth guardian and part of the indigo and starseed soul family tribes that are here with this larger purpose, to bring disclosure and awakening and to, to actually seed and weave in truth of what has actually happened in the divine human history. Then you feel the energies, you feel the sacred energies and the sacred frequencies and you feel them call to you. And you can start to, you know, really look in and feel into, you know, what are my dreams telling me? What, what are the dreams that I've had in the past? You know, and it's really interesting. I, over many, many years, I trained myself to never forget a dream. I mean, maybe there's, because I forgot, I don't know. But no, truthfully, every morning, I'll write a little something in a dream journal. And I've had so many of these. And I've done that since I was a little girl. In fact, one time it got me into huge trouble because somebody uh, won't name who, but someone had read my Reddit, which is horrifying because it's like a diary. I mean, anyway, that's a different story. But <laughs> so an earth guardian, there's different varying lineages. And the, and the paths that we follow come from these lineages. And as wisdom keepers, we're holding certain frequencies in our words, in our, in our, the knowledge that we're bringing through that comes from our DNA. And so in my, in my figuring out all of this, you know, and really tapping in to this, the frequencies and knowing there was a reason why when I was little, I was obsessed with dragons. There was a reason why I was little, I was obsessed with King Arthur. I knew literally that the stories that were out there were not true because of course they made Queen Guinevere look like a complete ass as they always do, right? This is the patriarchal matrix, you know, trying to stiffen the cosmic Christo Sophia energy. And the cosmic mother, like, you know, again, smashing her down, trying to make it like she doesn't exist so that it can only be a him and not a her when it's both, <laughs> right? A cosmic mother and a cosmic father and, and this trinity, right? So when we figure this out and then when I connect it into the energies, because I've always held the wisdom within me that have gotten painted a completely incorrectly as have Celtic Druids and 
the Celts and the Druids and the Celtic Druid lineages. And so when I, when I know that I'm of the Celtic Druid Magi Grail line, it really makes sense because then I can, I'm, I can figure out, well, there's a reason why, you know, I, I'm a seer. There's a reason why I am mystical. I ha I'm a mystic, you know, because I'm part of a sisterhood and we are female mystics and seers. And we're in the line of the mother of dragons. And we're here for very specific missions in that lineage. And see, that's the power of the lineage. But the bigger mission that we're here for is to be earth guardians. The Emerald Order, and there's other orders, and there's other lineages. But the ultimate miss, mi mission is to be, be an earth guardian. And more so, a protector of the energies and the animals and the plants and the minerals and humanity, the divine humanity. And if we choose to accept the earth guardian aspect to this, then we can, sh we, we are, be you know, we, that is bigger, the bigger ask and being an earth guardian is not easy. It's not easy because every day we're bombarded with a truth of that there is suffering. I can see, but I'm an empath and I feel, and I feel energies. I feel Gaia and I, and the mother, cosmic mother and the mother of dragon line you know, I, I am so connected deep into that, that I feel when they, when there are landscapers and they come along and they have that poison. And I won't say the word because I'll probably get censored, but they spray. I feel the earth and all the things tremoring with, with why are you doing this to me? So when you are an earth guardian as part of this, all of our, you know, our missions, we feel this, we, you know, when, when the recent new Avatar movie came out, I knew it was going to be difficult to watch, but I didn't quite realize how difficult it was going to be to watch because my husband and I went and I sobbed, not cried. I sobbed, guffawed for three hours, the entire length of the movie, I couldn't stop. And the reason why is because that's a documentary of what has actually taken place on earth. It is a, there and there, and these evil factions are trying to repeat this. So us as earth guardians with even again, no matter which order, if you're not in the Emerald order and you're from another order and you're from a different it doesn't matter because, again, our overall essence is to step into the earth guardianship and guard and, and real and really, really, really remember what the word guardian means. And, you know, part of my downloads, and I'll share this in another video, I actually was guided into exactly what the word warrior means. It is not what is portrayed today, as you can probably assume. So I'll hit on that in my next video. But the ask here is that we have specific missions, meaning we hold individual keys of wisdom. And they're going to be, they will come through us in a very unique way. So knowing the unique way in which you need to bring through what's inside of you is the power. That is how we reclaim our power. That is how we reclaim our divinity. And then stepping into the true action of becoming the earth guardian. You know, there's, I was never called into um, doing grid work, but I was called into physically helping animals when I was a very young girl. In fact, I used to take my, I wanted to protect our chickens and our ducks. And so 
I took my little chair. I had a tiny little baby chair and I used to take it out. I used to sit it in front of the coop and I would bring a little snack like raisins and I would sit in front of the coop and I would eat it. I would eat my little raisins and then I would watch the, I would just be there to watch the chickens. And that energy within me was about protecting animals and protecting these, these beings. So my little, my action was called in a different way. And so the service in which we are bringing through is part of this larger, I call it a large mosaic. And if every indigo and star seed that has a mission puts their mission into the map and it lights up, can you even imagine like how much this is going to change everything? Because truly it is the few of the light that are going to change this entire everything. And this, by the way, what has also come to me, we are not just changing earth. And in fact, a better way to say this is we're protecting the energies so that we can end suffering and we can move in to the new earth, the Terra, into the fourth density, to reach into a higher dimensional consciousness and the frequencies that are coming in, accessing new pathways to, to allow us to go into places and to, to experience realms in which we've never been able to, to experience before. And when we, when we heal ourselves, we help heal this realm, this world. What we're actually doing is we are, we are, we are healing. We are sewing together a tear in the universe. And it's not just our galaxy. It's not just Milky Way. It's not just this system. It is many systems, many universes. And so that is why we have prepared. And there are so many star seeds and indigos, and we have been coming into this incarnation for 200 years. 150 to 200 years is the number that always comes to me. And we have been planning, and we are here in the now time to make this change happen, to heal and to bring back the fabric together and sew it so softly back into place so that we can. We can bring new galaxies, new systems together in a, in a time and, a, and, a, and in, a, in a way that has actually never been done before. And so the activations in these words is learning the lineage of which you come from, knowing the mission that you're here for specifically knowing your unique gifts that you hold specifically, knowing the magic that you hold specifically. And then the overarching theme is stepping into the power of becoming a guardian. You know, we can take action right now, today, at this moment. I just reached out to a beautiful man who has, is writing so many things about how to save animals from the clutches of these big pharma systems that want to, to, they don't care about the health of animals, they just want profit. So I'm reaching out to him so that I can hopefully, you know, to set up a meeting, see how I can activate further and see how I can help him get out, get known and his work and you know so we can take these it's like these mini step actions that can truly activate us more and more and more and more and more and more so i just leave you today with this and you know may we all rise to heal the fabric of all things and weave together the divine masculine and divine feminine again and bring back the wis wisdom of the cosmic mother to meet the cosmic father again in the divinity and to light the threefold flame again and for all of the orders 
and all of the higher dimensional aspects of who we truly are to align and to remember and to awaken so that we can step into our power so that humanity can reclaim their true place in all things. Have a good night.